Well, in this presentation, I will be talking about the um, rule editor. Okay, um, whenever using a rule editor, you can use a dynamic help if we are not sure about uh, some concepts. So by using the, uh, choosing dynamic help and clicking inside the rule editor, it displays the um, uh, rule editor details, some links, or again in the contents, table of contents, defining shape grammar, rule shape, uh, rule editor, and rule list uh, displays uh, the description of the both parts. First very important thing is that we are using simplistic uh, description, uh, this, uh, the simplistic description of the rule, where we both sides of the rule, the left side and the right side, we display in one window. I just did this setup for uh, presentation purposes. So this is our left side shape and this is our right side shape. We display both in the same window where left side shape is displayed in black and the right side shape is displayed in red. So this is actually how our rule editor, uh, how our rule looks. So this is the left side and the right side shape. So we can modify the spatial representation in the one window. Okay, we are uh, um, uh, using three different um, uh, rule types, and I will display. Uh, I will explain uh, all of them uh, in this presentation. So let us start fresh with a new uh, shape grammar. We create a new shape called square. We edit this shape by double clicking on the shape. We turn on the grid. We display the tools. And I create this nice little square. Click and click. And now I want to create a rule as displayed before that I will add a new square to the top right part of the square. So I create new addition rule. I name this rule add square. I open it. And while having this rule editor open, I click on the list of shapes. I right click on the shape I added to the left side of the room. I added to the right side of the room, and uh, the left side did not disappear. It just displayed in the behind of the right uh, right side shape. I turn on the grid for better positioning, and I create this uh, this special representation. And if I now go to renderer, I leave the default settings on. And I see uh, using breath first uh, search protocol. I um, um, render this design. If I turn on the subject detection, I see that I immediately start using emerged shapes, which is this square which um, emerged by intersecting these two previous squares. I love this this new one. Okay. But if you have a, if you're asking yourself, but how would I just basically move shape into the new location or uh, move uh, the like scale the left side shape? For these purposes, we have a so-called modification rule. I create new modification rule, name modify square, and uh, now I will add a shape to the left side. As you see, you cannot add it to the right side because if you take a look, when adding to the left side, it's immediately added to the both sides. So now this is a spatial representation between a left side shape and the right side shape, which is basic translation to the top right part of the shape. Again, for the better positioning and better manipulation, I can uh, modify some parts, modify some properties of the rule shape um, by hand. So I can rotate it by some amount of degrees or scale. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to scale this shape to the 1.5 size of its, of its size. 1.5 times of its size. And now if I go back to renderer and I go first with the breath first search protocol, I see as searching through the tree, I will first add a square. Now I will modify the square. Now this new one. I will add, I will modify. To see the difference, the depth first search, when it's searching in the depth of the tree, 
I would be only um, modifying the size of the shape. And you can all see nicely in this, let's close this out, you can see this in the back three. So I go B down while in the, the first search I search the width of the tree. Okay, if and if I again if I turn on the subject detection, I see that I'm using emerge shapes and this emerge shape was just resized to the um, to the new size. What remains is the substitution rule. So let's delete this modification one. And I will uh, first add a new shape, some rectangle. I'm not on the grid again. And I create this rectangle. And I will create a new substitution rule. I can rename it substitute square. And I will be substituting square by rectangle. Rectangle by rectangle. And I will just leave the default settings on. And I go back to render. I will be using first breadth per search. I add a square, I substitute square, I add a square, I substitute square, and so on. In the dead depth per search, I'll be I will be able only to do one step because I will I have immediately substituted the, the square. And uh, there is no rule uh, where I have a rectangle on the uh, left side of the rule. So um, again, with the subshape detection on, you see there are some substitutions of the image shapes going on. Um, okay. Uh, so again, if you have any any doubts about the, the row editor, feel free whenever to use dynamic help, and there are all the uh, all the answers you are uh, searching for. Thanks for watching, and uh, have a wonderful day.